a man has come forward by the name of Ken Ralphs and spoken to the media. This is a new name to me. And he's been living out of the UK for some considerable time. In fact, in 2007, in the lead up to the time of Madeline's disappearance, he was living on the Algarve in Portugal, fairly close to where the McCann family went on their holiday. What he has said is that in the week leading up to Madeline's disappearance, he was in conversation with a man who apparently knew the man known or believed to be a suspect in Madeline's disappearance, the German man who, for legal reasons, is referred to as Christian B. So the man who sits in the middle between this new informant, Ken Ralphs, and Christian B is somebody whose identity we don't know. And everything that Ken Rouse has told the media is, of course, hearsay. So we need to be very careful about this potential development. I'm going to call him the man in the middle. The man in the middle told Ken Rouse that he'd had a conversation with Christian B about potentially abducting a child to sell to a childless German couple. But once again, I say, please be very cautious about this. None of it has been verified. None of it has been proven. It's just hearsay, chat, and nothing more. So as much as this case has twisted and turned and weaved its way from one theory to another, in my opinion, none of this has got any law enforcement agency or any authority any closer to an arrest, a charge, a trial or a conviction in regard to Madeline's disappearance. Kim Ralph claims that when he came back to the UK not long after Madeline's disappearance and he heard of her disappearance, that he went to the British police in the north of the country and gave a full statement about this conversation between him and the man in the middle when he told him about the conversation he'd allegedly had with Christian B. He also claims that the police didn't follow that up. Well, if indeed that is true, that would appear to be negligence on behalf of the police service to whom he gave his statement. Uh, he also says that he spoke to the Portuguese police and was almost kind of brushed off, for want of a better expression. Either way, some 17 years later, it would appear there's gaps, there's errors, there's faults in just about every investigation into this case. And it may be that all those errors, which started on day one, when the Portuguese police trampled all over that apartment, potentially destroying, removing, contaminating any possible forensic evidence may actually mean that we will never see anybody charged with Madeline's abduction. I sincerely hope we do. Over the years, we have heard so much about Christian B. And there is some circumstantial evidence that would definitely make him worthy of investigation. For example, he lived in the Algarve. We know he had some criminal convictions. In fact, he's currently in prison for the rape of an elderly woman that happened way back in 2005. He drifted around in a van, didn't have a fixed address, was reported to have had an unhealthy interest in young children. But all of this is hearsay, or circumstantial evidence. There has not been one scrap of direct evidence produced. And what I mean when I say direct evidence is a DNA profile found at the scene, a DNA profile of Madeline found on any of his possessions, for example, a witness who said, yes, I saw him take her. None of that kind of direct, crucial 
important evidence, if it indeed existed, has ever been discovered. So we all need to exercise huge caution around what people are currently saying. A close friend of his at the time has given a statement to police detailing some apparent confessions, but the full details of those are not entirely clear yet. And there is an indicator that perhaps his phone was traced to being in the area of Praia de Luz around the time that Madeline disappeared. But even if we pull all of that together and it is all truthful and provable, it does not yet constitute sufficient evidence for him to be charged. And as we all know, no one, not a soul, has yet been charged in connection with Madeline's disappearance in any way, shape or form. That doesn't mean that we dismiss everything. We just need to be very careful. The testimony of this man needs to be tested. If indeed he did make an original statement, that needs to be found. It may be another useful small piece of this ever-growing jigsaw, which is far from complete, clearly. And it has to be given some merit, but we have to exercise caution around it. There can barely be anyone in the country who has not heard of the disappearance of Madeline. And I sincerely hope, like I'm sure millions of other people do, that at some stage there is a resolution to this case, that the truth is discovered and that the truth is told and that whosoever was responsible for the disappearance of that dear young child is held to account.